Okay, due to the interest in the higher level maths leaving search uh, probability questions, I'm going. I'm taking a break from 2008 and going to 2006, looking in paper two there and pulling out question six. Part A: How many different teams of three people can be chosen from a panel of six boys and five girls? Okay, there are a total of eleven people to choose from when making a team of three. This part of the question mentions no preference about the type of team that is formed, so it's a simple question of choosing a team of three from a total of eleven where we can use the well-known from n choose r formula. So we use uh, for, uh, n equal to 11 and r equal to 3, so we get the factorials there which, which we expand out. We get 11 factorial over 3 factorial over 8 factorial. 8 factorial will cancel from the numerator and we get that expression which we can simplify and we get 165. So 165 possible teams can be formed. Three people can be chosen from a panel of six boys and five girls. We know that already. If the team is chosen at random, find that the probability that it consists of girls only. Okay, so this is a probability question. We first need to find the number of teams that can be formed with girls only, and then divide this by the total number of possible teams regardless of type, which you already have. This last number was in fact calculated in section one. It was 165. So all we need to do now is find the number of possible all-girl teams and divide it by 165, and that will give us the requested probability. So what is the number of possible all-girl teams? Well, there's five girls, we're told. And we need to choose a team of three. So that's three from five. So again, we, we choose the from n choose r formula, which is where, where n equals five this time and r equals three. We expand into factorials, and we see that that simplifies to 10. So we divide this by 165 and we get the probability of it being an all-girls team of 3 to be 10 over 65, which is 2 over 33, which is 0 0.06. And that's the answer to this part. Okay, part B is a difference equation. It's 6 times un plus 2 minus un plus 1 plus un equal to 0. We're given the, uh, the n equal to 0 and n equal 1 values as usual, so it's a different difference equation, but it's very similar to the 2008 one in question 6, paper 2. Uh, please refer to my video on that if this one isn't clear, but I'm going to do it from first principles anyway. Uh, what we do is reformat the equation in terms of r to the power of n, where n refers to the order of the term. This usually gives a quadratic in r. We work out a combination of the, uh, of the two roots of, those of that quadratic uh, equation, and we get un in terms of u r to the power of n. So we go ahead, so un equals r to the power of n, we can do that to un plus 1 and un plus 2, we substitute that into the given difference equation, we divide across by rn, all this is the same, same method, and we get the quadratic 6 times r squared minus 7r plus 1 equal to 0. You should see, given some time, that the factors of this are fairly simple, not extremely simple, but a little bit simple, which is x minus 1 times x minus sixth, a sixth. So we set up the combination of these two roots. So we use a, a capital A first for the first root, which is 1 to the power of n, and capital B for a sixth, which was the second root, again put to the power of n. Now we just need a and b now. So we're told with n equal to 0, if we set n equal to 0 there, it should equal 8. So uh, we put the, the values in. And we get that a equals 8 minus b. So we can substitute this into the second given value, u1 equal to 3. And we, in fact, um, multiply across by 6 there to get 8 minus b. Um, sorry, 48 minus 6b plus b equal to 18. And that means that b equals 6. We plug that in back into 8 minus b to get a, which is 2. So the answer is as shown. Um, un equals 2 times 1 to the power of n plus 6 times a 6 to the power of n. 1 to the power of n is always 1, no matter what n is. So we get that again, we can change that 2 to the power, uh, multiply by 1 to the power of n to be just 2. So that is our result for this section. Verify that that, that, that solution also satisfies uh, 6 times un plus 1 minus un minus 10 equal to, t uh, to 0. Okay, all this part needs is a substitution of that formula we just of that solution we just got. It's too simple to be a question on its own, really. It's it's a verification step for part one. So in this way we can verify that part one is correct. So we'll just substitute uh, two plus six times uh, a sixth to the power of n plus one times six. That's our six times u n plus one term. We subtract it from by from well, we subtract it by the uh, u n term, and then subtract again by ten. 
So we rearrange those values, we get a 12 coming out, we take 2 from that, and then we isolate a 6 to the power of n. And we actually see, those should be fairly clear if you do those on paper, that it equates to 0. So the second difference equation is satisfied. Now we move on to part C, which was the interesting one. Um, there are 30 days in June. Seven students have their birthdays in June. The birthdays are independent of each other and all dates are equally likely. What is the probability that all se seven students have the same birthday? Now, when counting the number of combinations, we often pick out units, which can't be selected a second time. That's when we use the normal from n choose r formula. This time, items can repeat because the different people can have birthdays on the same day quite clearly. So on this occasion, we must ch use the uh, from n choose r formula, but with repetition, okay? And that is, from n plus r minus 1, choose r, okay? That works out in the same factorial manner, and this will help us calculate the number of possible birthday combinations. We will use this as our denominator later to work out probabilities then, because it's the total number regardless of type. Okay, so we get uh, n equal to 30, we get r equal to 7, and that equals from 36 to 7. We expand that out, 29 factorial cancels, we get a, sequen a product sequence there. Now you can go through the calculations, or the cancellations, they, uh, there are a few that come out. Eventually you should get 8,347,680 to be the total possible number of combinations of birthdays in June from seven people. Okay, the type of combination of interest in this first section is that all the birthdays be the same. So all the birthdays have to coincide. Think a little about this. It should be clear that this is only possible on each of the available days. So it means that it must be 30. So we divide 30 by our, by our total combination number to get the probability of this case. So you get 30 divided by the eight uh, plus something million. So that simplifies, and we get 3.6 to the power of 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so that's the probability, fairly low, very low that they all should coincide on the same day, seven people in June. Okay, what is the probability that all seven students have different birthdays? So this is kind of the opposite, that the, none of the birthdays coincide whatsoever. Okay, counting the number of times that all different birthdays can occur brings us back to the from n choose r formula, because it's, t uh, it's a type of event where the birthdays cannot be shared. So that's the condition in this type of combination. They cannot be shared. So we use the normal from n choose r formula. Okay, so n equals 30, r equals 7. This time we get 30 factorial over 7 factorial over 23 factorial. And we expand that out, cancel 23 factorial from the numerator. And these simplifications allow us to write 5 times 3 times 28 times 27 times 26 times, times 5. And we get a million. Uh, 474,200. So the probability of all and uh, all different birthdays occurring is that number over the eight plus something million, or the eight million plus something, eight plus something million. So we get we <coughs> we can simplify there, and we get 0.177 to be the probability. Okay, that they're all on the same, or sorry, that they're all on different days. Okay, now, last part. Show that the probability that at least two have the same birthday is greater than 0.5. In other words, that there's better than even chances that two of those seven people will share, two or more of those seven people will share a birthday on in the month of June. Okay, you can do your head in if you start trying to work out numbers for the different types of combinations that occur. In other words, three people coinciding, four people coinciding, etc. Now, you could get stuck in, a, in this question and waste a bit of time on it. In fact, the answer to this one relies ta on taking a step back and using a commonsensical rather than a mathematical approach. It, it requires, quite simply, realizing that it means all the possible combinations which are not on all different days. Okay, what have we just done? Well, we've worked out that the total number of combinations for all different days. So that's the answer to part two. So on that logic, we get the probability of at least two birthdays coinciding, at least two, to be the uh, from n choose r with repetition formula minus the uh, from n choose r without repetition formula all over um, from n plus r minus one choose r. Okay, so that's the summary of the logic here. Now we've worked out all the numbers for it. Um, so we just expand, uh, we, uh, and then that gives us that fraction, and we get 0.823. Now, now uh, actually, the, the question was whether this is over 0.5. Well, yes, I think it is. 0.8 is over 0.5, and that completes this question. Thank you.